We're going to talk about cybersecurity today because of what happened last week to Twitter, a $30 billion company ran by Jack Dorsey, 330 million users, millions of people use it on a daily basis. Somebody was able to hack their system and specifically to the following accounts, President Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Kim Kardashian, Elon Musk, Apple. I can give you a ton of names. They hacked into the account. And here's what the tweet said. I am giving back to my community due to COVID-19. All Bitcoin sent to my address below will be sent back doubled. If you send $1,000 of Bitcoin, I will send back $2,000 with a link going on and says, I'm only doing this for the next 30 minutes. A bunch of people fell for it. So here's the question. If Twitter, a $30 billion company, Ran by Jack Dorsey, 330 million users can be hacked. Can you get hacked? And somebody takes away your passwords, your checking account, your method of getting into all your social media, send emails. Can somebody do that? And can you find a way to protect yourself against any of that happening? Sure you can. We're going to talk about that today. In today's video, we're going to talk about cybersecurity stats, biggest data breaches of the 21st century, method of hacking, how people hack into accounts, and last but not least, solution how you can protect yourself. So brace yourself because some of these stats are going to shock you. Let's get right into it. Number one, hackers attack different accounts every 39 seconds. That means every 39 seconds, someone's being hacked. Number two, since COVID-19, FBI reported a 300% increase on reported cyber crimes. Next, 43% of cyber attacks target small businesses. Average global cost for breach is now $3.9 million across the board for small business owners. 95% of breached records come from three industries, government, retail, technology. In retail, they're focused on credit cards, technology, they want passwords, which gets into banking, and obviously government and social security, a bunch of different records. Approximately, watch this number here, approximately $6 trillion is expected to be spent globally on cybersecurity by 2021. I didn't say one trillion, six trillion dollars. Unfilled cybersecurity jobs worldwide will reach four million by 2021. By the way, average cybersecurity engineer salary, $140,000 a year income. More than 77% of organizations do not have any cybersecurity incident response plan. 77%. Total cost for cyber crimes worldwide added up to over a trillion dollars. Average time to identify a breach in 2019 was 206 days, according to IBM. Only 5% of company folders are properly protected on average. Let me say that one more time. Only 5% of all company folders are protected. That's 5% only. Estimated number of passwords used by humans and machines worldwide is officially over 300 billion passwords. We got 7 billion people living worldwide. 300 billion passwords are being used. 56% of Americans don't know what to do once there's an event of a data breach. 34% of data breaches involve internal actions. One in 36 cell phones have high-risk apps installed. And last but not least, financial services industry takes in highest cost from cyber crime at an average of $18.3 million per company survey. Think about that, $18.3 million. So I'm curious, after seeing these stats and hearing me say it to you, what do you think about it? What, what, what does it make you feel like? Because I can tell you for me, at two and a half years ago when I was at an insurance conference, hearing stats like this, I sat there and I said, let me get this straight. I run a business, multiple, I got investments, I got companies, I got family, I got kids, I got all of these different things. How am I protecting myself? So when we came back two and a half years ago till today, I've spent around $2 million on cybersecurity. Different analysts we've hired, full-time technology, software, constantly we're putting money into it. Now you may be watching and saying, Pat, I don't have that kind of money, I don't have that kind of a size of a business, but I'd like to find a way to protect myself. That's why this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Now, if you follow Value Timmy, you know we don't say yes to all sponsors, but we decided to say yes to ExpressVPN because we like what they do. They're ranked number one by CNET and Wired for what they do, which is a virtual private network. ExpressVPN, VPN is a virtual private network. Here's how it works. Think about it if you're on your internet service provider, you're searching, whatever website you're on, your internet service provider can legally in US sell all your data. They can sell it and it's not illegal. If you don't have something like ExpressVPN, they can do that. Once you have it, it's protected. Probably the best analogy I can give you is the following thing. Think about using the internet and you put a condom on. <laughs> I know it's a weird analogy, but no one can get in to see what you got going on because you're officially protected. So passwords, your IP addresses you go to, any of that stuff, 
you're fully protected if you have ExpressVPN. A lot of times people say, well, I'll go incognito and I'll go private and I can delete my cookie and my history. They can still track all of that. And the good news is that ExpressVPN is in 90 plus different countries and you can use ExpressVPN to protect your phone, PC, TV, video game, any of that stuff. So if you want to get your online activity protected, go to my exclusive link. It's expressvpn.com forward slash PBD VPN, you see it on the screen as well. We're going to put the link below as well to get yourself started. You may not be able to spend the kind of money we've spent to protect our company, but you can definitely get yourself started with something simple as ExpressVPN. So having said that, let's get into the biggest data breaches of 21st century. The first one is Yahoo. So 3 billion user accounts in 2014 and 2013 were breached. This is names, email, passwords, date of birth, and security questions. That's Yahoo, by the way. That's the biggest of all time. 3 billion. By the way, they took two, three years to tell the world that they were breached with 3 billion accounts. You got Sina Weibo, which is kind of like the Twitter of China, 538 million accounts were hacked in March of 2020. Marriott, 500 million customers. That's contact, passport number. Once again, your passport information, 100 million credit card info. That to come out and tell people that this really took place. Adult friend finder, that's 412.2 million accounts. Penthouse.com, comms.com, icoms.com, scriptshow.com. Imagine all of that data that they're going out there breaching, right? MySpace, 360 million accounts in 2013, which is pretty funny here to see the MySpace link with LinkedIn. You'll be surprised what the hacker asked in return to release all that information back. NetEase, 235 million user accounts. This is an email. This was in October of 2015. Zynga, 218 million user accounts. This is gaming. LinkedIn, 165 million user accounts. That was in 2016. By the way, watch this. The same person that hacked MySpace is the same person that hacked LinkedIn. You know what all this kid wanted? He just wanted five Bitcoins. At the time, so it was worth $2,000. Think about it. Very simple. I hack these things. I give it back to just give me five Bitcoins, right? Some simple kid that's uh, hacking an account. Dub Smash, 162 million user accounts. Adobe, big company, 153 million user records. My Fitness Pal, that's Under Armour's app, 150 million user accounts. Equifax, 147.9 million eBay, 145 million. And last but not least, Ashley Madison, which was 32 million accounts. When that came out, it was mayhem. Everybody was wondering if their name's going to be on the list or not. So now, all of these companies are big companies. These are not small companies. But there are different methods of hacking, which I'm going to talk to you about. And many of the methods of hacking you can protect yourself about. But sometimes, if you're not aware, you get caught because you were not fully prepared on what could potentially happen. These companies, this typically happens because an employee didn't pay attention attention to what they were doing and then boom they got caught that's how it happens it's not like these companies don't have the proper protection somebody screwed up now watch this methods of hacking number one a virus a trojan this is a virus within something you download or install the moment you do it virus spreads into your computer and there's many things it can do stop your computer take all the passwords have access to what you're doing there's many methods to it number two is phishing phishing is replicate website to enter login or password for example you'll get an email saying congratulations we found out you're a celebrity you're officially getting verified on instagram oh my gosh i'm getting verified on instagram you log in, you put in your username, you get your password. Then at 20 minutes later, the guy sends you an email saying, wait a minute, we just got into your email account. You give me $1,000, I'll release your Instagram. You know how I know this happens? It's happened to us before, four years ago, three years ago when this happened to us. It happens to everybody. The best way to figure out for phishing is always see where the email is coming from. So it, if it comes from Gmail, it's not Instagram. If it's from whatever, like John Doe at Instagram XYZ.com, it's not Instagram. So it's always good to click on the email to find out who's sending it to you. Number three, eavesdropping. This one is epic because they monitor what you're doing, but you don't even know they're in your system. So they get into your system, you're going on the website, there's no virus. The virus is, I watch everything you're doing. That's eavesdropping, that's a method of hacking. Next one is a fake WAP. 
Fake WAP is fake Wi-Fi to get access to your data. It's very obvious what that is. Next one is waterhole attacks, which means it's similar to a fake WAP, but they're doing it in a location with a lot of traffic coming in. So imagine a busy Starbucks. Imagine a busy bookstore, a busy mall where a lot of people are tapping into that Wi-Fi, and I can go and get access to a lot of different people's accounts and activity. Next one is DDoSing, which is denial of service. So flooding with traffic to crash your site. It's not really something that they want to get anything from you. It's more to embarrass you. Let me crash the Pentagon website. Let me crash the Facebook website to embarrass them and humiliate them. It's a, it's a different method of doing what they do. Okay, keylogger is very simple. This is malware that tracks your keypad. So whatever you're typing, whatever email you're sending, whatever thing you're saying with the keypad, they're able to see it. Next, social engineering. This is fake phone calls. It's also happening on social media, whether it's through Skype. This is when you get somebody calling you and they get you to feel comfortable, whether they're representing the IRS, whether they're representing, you know, you have a lawsuit against, you have this against, you feel guilty. Oh my gosh, I mean, what's your social security number? Is it this? And you give all your data, boom, they're already in and then you're in trouble. They're able to use that stuff uh, against you. Next one is bait and switch, which is fake ads that takes you to a different place that leads to a virus. That's what bait and switch is. Then it's Cookie theft, which is taking your cookies off your computer, which leads to getting access to your passwords and many other things. So remember, these are things that are happening. No matter how much you spend, if you don't pay attention to this stuff, it can get you in trouble. So what's the solution? Number one, everything I talked about today will give you a PDF at the end for you to download where you can teach your employees, your family, everybody. Either have them watch this video, which I highly recommend your family, your kids, your spouse, your employees watching this video to know exactly what the potential ways of getting hacked is, but teach them these stats. Our business analysts, they send stats. Mario, on a weekly basis, what is it? Every single week yeah. we get stats that come out that tell us everything about cybersecurity. So our employees are always watching out for it. Number two, SWOT analysis with your team and your family. What is SWOT analysis? What are our strengths when it comes down to uh, cybersecurity? What are our weaknesses? What opportunities do we have? What are some threats? Bring in your team, bring in your employees, bring in your family and talk about SWOT analysis. When you do SWOT analysis with your family, you realize you're just giving your iPad to your kids. You don't even know what they're doing. And some of the stuff they're doing, you're not watching. Like, oh, here you go, get on the iPad and be distracted for 30 minutes. They may have logged into your credit card account that's right there. And they're not really looking at the stuff. So SWOT analysis with your family and your business. Number three, change passwords. Don't use your pet's name and your password and your pet's got its own Instagram account linked back to you, you know, and it's, oh, good, this is the password. Oh, what an easy guy. Thank you so much for making your password so easy. Change your password. Make it something that makes no sense. Put a sentence that is a long sentence with 30 letters. No one can find that and then find some numbers that are not necessarily your date of birth. Number four, strengthen your home network. Call your service provider and ask them, what do I need to do to make it stronger? Maybe a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot cheaper than you getting hacked. Number five, hire an analyst to do an audit. So for example, say you're a small business with five employees. You may not have a lot of money to spend the kind of money I'm talking about, but maybe you can afford $3,000, $5,000, $10,000. Have somebody come in and say, can you audit all of my stuff that I have in place and use a credible company? They'll come in, they'll look, okay, you're weak here, you're weak here, you're weak there, you're weak there, you're weak. I can help you with this. We can clean this up and they'll help you out. Spend three, four, five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars $10,000 to make you feel comfortable about what you got going on. Number six is using certain apps or technology that stores all your passwords. There's a lot of credible ones. You can go look them up for yourself. An example of a company is Key pass, K E E pass. These are some of the softwares and technologies that store 40, 50 passwords. You know, a lot of time you got seven different passwords. Like, I forgot the password to this. I forgot the password today. But you save, uh, save it in a place that's not safe. Then somebody can see it, that somebody can get access to it. The next thing you know, they're phishing into your accounts and money's leaving because you didn't protect yourself. You can use different apps to help you with that. Number seven is keep your eyes on your kids' technology. Go home and talk to your dad. What do you use? Grandpa, what do you use? Mom, husband, wife, kids, everybody. And last but not least, if you are attacked, cyber attack, whatever happens to you, somebody is using your technology, contact local authorities, whether it's the cops, the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, and FBI. I've dealt with all three organizations, and I highly recommend you going straight to it. The reason why many times people don't is for the following reason. Many times they don't because a person comes back and says, listen, bro, listen, dude, you pay me $500, I'll give the password back to you, and people give it back, and it's over with. That person needs to be reported so they can't do that to the next person and the next person and the next person. So there are fewer victims, but many times people don't report them. I'm recommending you 
report them to FTC, FBI, and the cops so they don't do it to the next person because it continuously keeps happening. So final thoughts, i got three things for you. Number one, I promise you PDF, if you text, if you text cyber to 310-340-1132, once again, cyber, text the word cyber to 310-340-1132, we will text you back a PDF of this so you can share it with your employees, your family, your staff, and talk about it. Number two, is ExpressVPN. If you haven't yet gone to, make sure you go to the link below and sign up. If you sign up today for a 12-month package, we'll give three months free because you're going through uh, our link that we have in place. Again, you sign up for a 12-month package, you get three months free, get your ExpressVPN. And last but not least, if you watch this video, one of the reasons why I interview a lot of random characters because I'm trying to see how people try to beat the system so I can protect myself. The one person I sat with, he was on the Secret Service best list, America's most wanted list, on every single list, and then eventually got arrested, did nearly 12 years of jail time because he conned the bank away from $40 million in the most creative ways. If you've never watched this interview, I highly recommend you watch it to know how this is happening all over the place and you have to think how they think so you can protect yourself against any of these things happening to you and your family. So if you've never watched my interview with Matthew Cox, click on the link over here to watch it. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.